Coming up tonight on YCN News. Claremont School Board approves a $31 million school budget. Congresswoman Ann McLean Custer has a new challenger for the next election. And New Hampshire athletes join Team USA for the upcoming Olympics. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Thursday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Claremont School Board Wednesday night approved a $31.1 million school budget for voter approval. Voters will have the chance to review this at the February 3rd public hearing. The meeting will be held where the school board meets at the Sugar River Valley Technical Center in Claremont near the middle school. Of the five board members present, all agreed with the $31 million proposal, although board member Heather Irish had some reservations about approving money for three new staff members at the city's three elementary schools. Money in the budget funds all school needs, except for some items which will be on a separate ballot as warrant articles. On a related school note, the contract between Johnson Controls and the Claremont School District is in place. It has taken since last year for this energy savings plan to be worked out. The goal of the GCI contract is to save money on electricity and heating. Those savings will go back into the school district to cover building renovation issues. A feasibility study may soon be underway to see if full-day kindergarten should be offered in Cornish, Unity, and Claremont. Those three schools comprise SAU6. After the break, we'll hear about the Republican competitor who will run against Congresswoman Ann McLean Custer and the local New Hampshire athletes who will be representing the U.S. in the upcoming Olympics. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. The Associated Press reports that Congresswoman Ann McLean Custer will have another challenger. State Representative Marilinda Garcia, a Republican from Salem, announced Wednesday she is running for New Hampshire's 2nd District seat. Garcia will now compete with former State Senator Gary Lambert for Custer's seat. A group of volunteers say Hartford, Vermont, should fluoridate its tap water. This group is being led by Beth Kopp of the Upper Valley Oral Health Coalition, reports the Valley News. Kopp said Wednesday night that getting fluoride in the water gives all children drinking it an advantage. Kopp also said the Centers for Disease Control calls fluoridation one of the ten greatest public health advances of the 20th century. A White River school nurse, Jeanette Hutchins, says fluoridation doesn't take place of good dental care and doesn't take place of good oral hygiene, but it does go a long way. Hartford and Claremont do not fluoridate municipal water supplies. The Hartford Select Board will look into the group's proposal. In local U.S. Olympics news, Nick Alexander of Lebanon, New Hampshire, is one of four men who will represent the country on the U.S. Olympic ski jumping team. The games will start February 7th in Sochi, Russia. Alexander is 25 and he will be joined by Nick Farrell of Andover, New Hampshire. In Charlestown, a Dollar General store may be coming to this town, reports the Eagle Times. The business leaders with the company presented store information to the town's planning board Tuesday night. The store, if approved by town planners and select board, would be at 119 Main Street. It would be under 10,000 square feet and would feature a sloping metal roof with a window in front. Planning board members are looking into a traffic study if this company does set up shop in Charlestown. My name is Cindy Logan. I own and operate the Fox Stop as well as the Red Fox Inn in Bonville. My passion for pie uh, was born when I moved to Vermont in 1975 and I've been making pies ever since. Apple pie, of course, is the uh, biggest, most popular flagship product that we do. But we do do seasonal pies all year. We do berry pies in the summer and the pecans and the pumpkins during the holidays. But apple pie is by far the most popular. 
I truly believe it's the simplicity of the pie. It's just the honest to goodness, simple ingredients. We use all Vermont products in my pie. We use local Vermont flour, Vermont butter, juicy Macintosh Vermont apples, and just uh, keeping it very super simple. That's it. Over the years, we've received a lot of recognition about the pies. Uh, years ago, we were voted the best apple pie in Vermont by Yankee Magazine. And we've also had the honor to be invited down to Washington, D.C. for both inaugurations of President Obama, apple pie being the most patriotic dessert. We do get to Washington every spring as well for an event that Senator Leahy and his wife put on. It's by invitation. It's called A Taste of Vermont, and it's held every year in the Senate building, and the pies are always a very big hit. We actually do ship pies. We, My husband and I have engineered the shipping and packaging to be able to ship a fresh pie, not frozen, all over the planet. My name is Cindy Bean Logan from Ma Beans Vermont Pie Company, and my slogan for National Pie Day is, Pie Fixes Everything. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at some local high school sports. Thanks Rose. Tomorrow we're expecting sunny skies with temperatures between 12 and 5 degrees. Saturday will bring some light snow and temperatures will rise to highs in the mid-20s with a low of 4 degrees. Sunday will be cloudy with a high of 16 and lows down to 11 degrees. Monday will have more snow with highs in the 20s and a low of negative 2. Tuesday will be sunny, but dress warm because we're expecting a high of 13 degrees with lows in the negatives. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, head on over to Charlestown for the Winter Carnival Basketball Game between the Recreation Police and Fire Department. The Carnival's opening ceremony begins at 5 p.m. and the game starts at 6 p.m. in the middle school. And now let's look at the Snow Country Report with Hallie O'Brien. Hey, it's Hallie O'Brien here in the ever scenic slopes of Crested Butte, Colorado. They're open wall to wall with plenty of terrain to choose from, including 10 new acres of intermediate glades. You bet your butte you'll have a good time, am I right? And when you're done, head over to the Paradise Deck for a bacon Bloody Mary. You know, a congratulatory drink. This late Arctic cold snowmaking stretch should set up our major ski trails with strong coverage for the rest of the season. More family fun at Ragged Mountain this Sunday. The Mountain Dew Vertical Challenge is a free fun race for all ages and a party with music and lots of free stuff. 20 dancing mascots will be all over the mountain at Pat's Peak on Sunday. You know, folks like Winnie the Pooh and Buzz Lightyear. Does this oh. make my butte look big? Ah, <laughs> uh, sure it does. Yeah. What? What about Crested Butte do you love? Well, I really love how extreme it is here. You, you get up into the extremes and it just gets to a new, whole new level of extreme that no one else is, can ski, I don't think, like. See, extreme terrain at Crested Butte. So Okimo has a helmet head contest on Saturday. Show the bad hair from your helmet and win ski tickets, if it's bad enough. The NATO Telemark Clinics come to Bromley this weekend. They are the most complete two-day on-snow Telemark Clinics offered in North America. So if you're planning a trip out west, Crested Butte should definitely be on your hit list. For more information, head over to snowcountry.com. We'll see you next week. And now, let's look at local high school sports. Yesterday, the Sunapee Lakers girls basketball team conquered Dairyfield 73-19. There are many basketball games happening tomorrow. Here are some to look out for. Thank you for joining us for this Thursday edition of YCN News. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can watch our programs anytime online at www.ycnnow.com. Be sure to tune in tomorrow to hear from Sean Jackson, Director of Culinary Services at Mount Sunapee Resort. I'm Rose Spillman for YCN, your local view. Good night.